stepmother thought that it was the children's fault we were so poor because they ate up all the food. We'd be all right if we didn't have to feed those horrible brats of yours. Ooh. It's the children's fault we're going so hungry. What use are they to us anyway, the horrible little scallywag? Oh, you can be wicked, lady. I just can't get rid of me children. Well, then you were sentenced at all to an early grave, you stupid little man. Oh, oh. oh dear. So, the horrible stepmother, she bullied me and bullied me and bullied me. She, she came up with a nasty plan to get rid of the children and she made me do it or else. Yeah, come here. Here's the plan. You're going to take the children deep into the woods and pretend that you're collecting wood for the fire. You'll give them some bread and supper, uh, and tea for supper, so that they think we're being all nice. And then we'll wait until sundown and we'll leave them there. They'll never find their way back on their own in the dark. Now, you better go and do it or else. Oh, uh, yes, sir. Ah! I mean, uh, my wife. <laughs> But little did they know that young Hansel had heard every word. I heard, I heard every word. And he immediately told his sister Gretel everything. Oh no, that's terrible. But clever Hansel here had a plan. Don't worry, I have a plan. Hansel told Gretel that when they were led into the forest, they would sprinkle a trail of breadcrumbs so that they could find their way home. Now, that night, Hansel and Gretel went to sleep, ready to put their plan into play. Hansel? Gretel? Wake up, children. Come on, follow me. We're gonna go into woods and collect firewood here. Here's some bread for your supper. Come on, follow me now, oh dear. <laughs> Loving father was very sad, and he felt terrible leading the children into the woods. But Hansel and Gretel were very, very clever. They were dropping breadcrumbs so that they could find their way home again. And eventually, they walked up to a quiet space in the woods. Oh, my children. I think we'll stop here for a while. Come on, you look tired out. Sit down there. You look very tired. Why don't you... Take some shelter under this tree here. <laughs> go on. That's right. Oh, dear children. I'm going to go off and collect firewood by myself, all right? Oh, my children. I do love you, you know. Just as the horrid stepmother Yes, oh, no. we get it. It's sad, we understand. And just as the horrid stepmother wanted, the loving father had left them all on their own. But by this point, it was far too dark for the children to see the breadcrumbs. So they decided to sleep until morning when it was light enough. But as the night drew in. The horrible birds and creatures of the forest started to make a noise. So that's you, Mum. Let's hear it. Oh, there was one bird in particular who was very hungry. A big crow. Say hello, crow. Hello, crow. Excellent. Right, crow. The crow flapped around the forest and ate up all of the breadcrumbs that they'd left behind. Look at the crow, crow. Look at that. Fantastic, careful. Gonna eat the children as well. <laughs> <laughs> well done, come this way. That's it, fantastic. Say, <laughs> breadcrumbs. Mm, breadcrumbs. <laughs> now, the very next morning, the sun arose and the children awoke. Now, as they set off to find their way, they found that all the breadcrumbs had gone. Oh, oh no! <laughs> and they were going to have to find their way home, all on their own. But as they walked through the scary woods, they could hear all the beasties of the forest growling. <laughs> <laughs> as they walked further through the woods, they could hear the bubbling water in the leafy brook. <laughs> <in> the <bubbles. laughs> 
Now, as they were getting very tired, they thought it was all over. So they sat down in the forest, feeling very lost and scared. But just as they were sitting there, a strange smell started to waft past their noses. The smell of marshmallows, chocolate, cake, uh, the long sweets you get from the Quality Street, uh, toffee, and caramel. Let's all sniff and imagine we can smell it together. The children got up and followed the smell. It was then that they saw the most beautiful house. The walls were made of gingerbread. The chimney was made of licorice and the windows were made of sugar. The children were so hungry that they ran over to the house and started munching on the walls. But just as they were eating these sweet, sweet walls, out popped an old lady. Hello? Who's that munching on my gingerbread house? Oh, I smell children. Oh, children. Do not be afraid, my darlings. I'm just a, a lonely old lady who lives alone here in the forest. Come on, come this way, children. Why don't you come into my house and have some cake? So, young Hansel and Gretel followed the old lady into the house and sat down to have some cake. Yeah, yeah my darling. Yeah, I'll just bring you a cake here. Yeah, there we go now. You'll have to forgive me. Me eyesight is very bad. I can't tell which one of you's the biggest. Who's the biggest? I am. Oh, well, my lad, you must have quite an appetite. Why don't you follow me here over into this cage? This is where I keep all my really delicious treats, isn't it? Do you think you should go? Pay no attention to the end. Just sit there, that's it. I'm going to shut the door. <laughs> you fools. I'm not really a nice old lady. I'm a very powerful witch. And I like nothing more than tempting them children into my gingerbread house. Yes. Now you, my boy, I was going to feed you up so that you are fat. And when you're fat enough, I'm going to cook you. And I'm going to eat you. And you, my girl, yes, you is going to be my slave. You're going to cook all the meals for your brother. And you're going to clean my house. Now stop cooking. Go on. So just like that, Hansel and Gretel were trapped. And every day, Gretel would prepare great big meals for Hansel so that he was fat enough to eat. But because the witch's eyesight was so bad, she needed to test to see if Hansel was fat enough. So she asked him to poke his finger out of the cage. Finger! Ah, but clever Hansel had found a bone on the floor. And he poked that out instead, so she thought he was too skinny. Ooh, too skinny. Gretel, keep cooking. Go on, he's not fat enough yet. <laughs> but eventually, the very impatient witch had enough of waiting. I've had enough of waiting. I can't do it right. Finger! Finger! <laughs> Oh, for goodness sake, he's still too skinny. Right, I was going to have to eat both of you to satisfy me, Anger. Gretel, turn the oven on, stoke the fire, tell me when it's hot enough. But then, Gretel had a very bright idea. She pretended that she didn't know how. For goodness sake, girl, it's perfectly simple. You just climb inside. Say, right, look here. You just open the door, turn it on, climb inside like this. And just like that, Gretel was as quick as a flash, and she pushed the witch all the way in the oven and closed the door. Ah! Ah! I'm melting! I'm melting! Oh. <laughs> Some of them have got happy endings as yeah. well. No, 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 I don't believe a word of it. Come on, please. 
seriously, the art of good storytelling, it's, it's how you get to the part of good overcoming evil. Isn't that right, everybody? Yeah! yeah. Exactly, and there always yeah. has to be a journey in between, and, well, sometimes it will be a bit disgusting and scary. Oh, Isn't that right, everyone? Yeah! yeah. yeah. I'll tell you what, mother, grab yourself a slice of cake, go and have a seat here with our friends who have gone, <laughs> and enjoy the rest of the story.